In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Brothers and sisters, as we continue through this holy Easter season, we first have prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. give you thanks. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as the leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your face shine upon us. When I call, answer me, O my just God. You who live or relieve me when I am in distress. Have pity on me and hear my prayer. Lord, let your face shine upon us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, let your light shine upon us. <clears throat> o Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. As soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O Lord, bring security to my dwelling. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, 
Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation of our sins, and not for our sins, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. He said this. As he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat. They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name. To all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, last night at the uh, 5.30 Mass, we had half a church full of, of high schoolers uh, headed off for their, for their junior-senior prom, uh, which is always a fun night for them. Uh, those of us who are older can think back uh, to our high school days. Um, we had uh, kids from all the different parishes in Northwest Wichita. You know, parishes are mostly the same, but not exactly the same uh, because, uh, because their priests are different. Um, we have uh, priests are not the same. Uh, every parish is a little different uh, because of the personality, uh, because of the age, because of the um, uh, the styles, uh, backgrounds of the particular priest of uh, uh, preaching uh, changes. Yes, uh, you go to different churches. Uh, preaching styles are not the same. Uh, some some homilies are deeply profound. Uh, certainly not all of them. Uh, some homilies are short. Uh, some are long. What my mom used to call. Uh, she used to call it windy. She'd say, son, you're a little windy tonight. Uh, but uh, all the, all the um, uh, parishes are a little different because of the personality of the priest and, and the homilies. But, you know, uh, we all end our homilies with the same two words. Every priest at every Sunday Mass, every single time. Hmm? Every priest, no matter where, no matter what parish, every priest ends their homily with the same two words. Two words? Answer? Answer? Same two words. Every homily, every Sunday homily, every church, every single time. Two words. Please stand. <laughs> In every place, no matter where you travel, they all end, please stand. And it's not just any please stand, but it's please stand and profess your faith. 
when the preacher is done preaching, the people are invited to stand and profess, to profess the faith that has been explained to them. That's what, that's what you have in this gospel today from Luke. The preacher is done preaching. This is Luke chapter 24. This is the last chapter of the gospel of St. Luke. The preacher is done. Jesus is done. All of the, the messages have been, have been proclaimed. All of the miracles have been worked. He has uh, died and he has resurrected. This is, this is the, at the very end. The, the, the preacher is done. And so he invites them to be witnesses, to stand and, and, and to take up, uh, to take up the gospel, uh, to stand up for the gospel, to stand up for Christ. And, and we're all invited to do that, not just to sit uh, passively here and to listen to these words, but to hear these words and at the end to, to, to stand up, to stand up for the gospel. And not just here, but out in the world. And that's not always easy, is it? It's not always easy in the world to stand up for what you know is right. You know, I said to these teenagers, every single one of them, they're in a group of people and there'll be someone taking God's name in vain. And it takes huge courage for a kid to, to stand up and say, that's not right. You know, God is the, is the maker of, of the world uh, to take his name in vain. Or, or kids are in a, in a group in a, in a lunchroom and, and, the, and the, everybody's piling on this kid, uh, uh, making fun of this kid, to stand up and say, that's not right to stand up for Christ, to stand up for the gospel. Adults in our communities, you know, in, in our, our workplaces and, in, and in, in stores, all the places, you know, we see people who are doing things that are wrong. They're, they're, they're not uh, according to the, to the law of God and to the commandments that he gave us. And we, we need to have the courage to, to stand up and to say that that's not right. Not to, not to uh, 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 you know, smack him down but rather to ask him to stop or to encourage him to stop. Not to, be, not to be so timid, not to be so afraid. And so every priest, every priest at the end of every homily invites the people to stand and profess, to stand up for Christ and, and for the gospel. As we said, it's, it's easy here, uh, but uh, not so much out in the, uh, in the world. Uh, actually, I, t I should tell you, one time it was not easy uh, here in, in church. When I, when I was first starting out, I was at the Church of the Magdalene uh, on the east side. And uh, at the Church of the Magdalene, we, we, we didn't preach every weekend, but, but one, the, one of the priests preached all the homilies. So you only had to preach every, every other week. So uh, I if it was my week, I would preach all the homilies, and, the, and I wouldn't celebrate all the masses. I would, I would just come out and I would preach. So, so one time, uh, Father Reagan, who was a wonderful, wonderful priest, uh, he, was, he was giving the homily. So I was sitting there and I was listening to the homily, had the two servers, uh, one on either side of me. And, and at the end of Father's homily, uh, he said, please stand. And so everybody stands up and we stand up and we start professing our faith. But I'm looking out and everybody's smiling. I'm like, what are you all smiling about? This is not easy. We have to profess our faith. But they're just, they're just all smiling. And then somebody goes like that. And I look, and this kid has his head back and his mouth open. And he's sound asleep. <laughs> uh, that's the only time. That's the only time. It was actually uh, easy, uh, not, not so easy to stand up. But out there it is hard. It's hard to stand up for the gospel, uh, to stand up, to say, I believe in one God, one God. I have one God, the Father Almighty. Almighty. God is almighty. Sometimes we look at our problems and we think, how is God ever going to fix these problems? We have, we have discord. We have war. How is God ever going to do that? Because he's almighty. There is nothing he cannot do. He is the maker of the world, the maker of heaven, the maker of earth. God is almighty. And the son, Jesus, is incarnate, which means that he was, he was fully human. Though he did not sin, he was fully human, which means he experienced all the things we experience. He knows what it is to be frustrated. He knows what it is to be sad. He knows what it is uh, to, be, to be happy and to be joyous. He was fully human. Jesus, fully human, incarnate uh, son, incarnate word, uh, the Holy Spirit, who continues to work, the sanctifier, the great sanctifier who moves through the world Making, uh, making, making things better, uh, filling uh, people with, with zeal uh, for the gospel. So we stand and we profess that we do believe. 
in one God, Father Almighty, Son incarnate, sanctifying Holy Spirit, still very much alive and very much uh, in our world. When the preacher, when the preacher stops preaching, the people are invited to stand, to stand up and profess their faith. Uh, the most important standing of all, not stand up and greet the celebrant or stand up and pray as Jesus taught us or stand up for the closing prayer, but after the homily to stand up and to profess faith, to be witnesses in the world to God's love and mercy. That's what Jesus does today. Uh, Jesus, the preacher uh, who was done preaching. Luke chapter 24. Um, so this preacher is done. Uh, this preacher is done for today. Um, now comes the time, the most important time, when we're invited to stand and profess our faith in God. If you're ready, the servers are ready. I'm a little worried about Jaron. Jaron said he was at a soccer game in Kansas City and got home at 2.30 last night. So I'm a little worried, Jaron. Give me a little wave. <laughs> Jaron's good. I hope you're good. The homily is done. The preacher is finished. Now, please, let us stand and pray. Professing our faith, I believe in one God. substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear now. These are prayers and petitions. We pray for world leaders, especially those working to restore peace in the Holy Land, in Ukraine, all the places where there is war and discord. Let us pray to the Lord. Let the church be ever thankful for the gifts and graces that flow from the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are unemployed or underemployed, May they be comforted by God who knows all things and the longings of their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. That we, united in love and service, may be perfected in the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Pray finally for those who have died, that God will receive them into eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. O God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, please, please hear us. As stewards of these Easter mysteries, we offer these prayers in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated now. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. It is truly right to acclaim you at all times, but in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us and defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body 
one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Catherine, Saint Dominic, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Carl, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter up, but I may say the word and my soul shall be healed.
May be seated. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. I neglected to uh, welcome. We have two visitors uh, traveling from a long way. Um, to, uh, there is a... Uh, vocation a weekend going on this weekend called Fiat, and uh, we have uh, two representatives from the Little Sisters of the Poor. Uh, one of the sisters is from Nebraska working in California, and the other is from Colorado working in Minnesota. Uh, so welcome to St. Catherine. Can we welcome them? God bless, uh, God bless your work, sisters, a good work that you do in all of those states, in Colorado and Minnesota and Nebraska and California, how do the priests end their homilies? <laughs> Two words. <laughs> Please stand. Yeah, let us go out there. The world needs us. The world needs us uh, to stand up for the gospel in all the places where we work and live. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended.